Has anime gotten worse over time? No. Anime's still good. What? You're contradicting yourself! Evangelion was rerun in the late night time slot. Ava's success convinced the industry of its profitability. In 1996, there was one late night anime. Today, 50 shows airing after midnight this year alone. So, you admit in the beginning we had only one late hour anime and it was good, and now we have 50. And what do we know about the quality of late hour anime? Anime after midnight is the trash. The stuff that everyone makes fun of. So you admit things are worse now! Tell me any shows you like, and I will find you a parallel in modern anime. Really? Then where is a modern day Neon Genesis or a modern day Berserk? I just see the remakes which are shit! 1998, the year we got Cowboy Bebop, Trigun, and Serial Experiments Lane. We didn't get a lot else that year. There just weren't a fuckload of shows coming out the way that there are today. Exactly! You admit things were better back then because we had quality instead of quantity! Anime is still just as good as it's ever been because there's so much more of it now. Oh my god! Do you at least have some good examples? We had Cowboy Bebop back in the 90s, we had Space Dandy in 2014. It's the same type of show, every bit as good as Cowboy Bebop. It's not even close as good! It was just random shit with no consistency! They go as far as saying every episode is an alternative reality! LAZY! If you liked Serial Experiments Lane, we had plenty of experimental interesting shows in 2014, Ping Pong. You compare existentialism and the definition of reality through the internet with a simple sports series? <laughs> totally the same thing! Modern anime. That's Masaaki Yuasa. I'm pretty sure it's actually light novel adaptations and soft porn. Hosoda! Everyone loves Mamoru Hosoda. I don't like Hosoda, he's melodramatic bullshit. In the 90s, we had uh, Dragon Ball Z, but in the 2010s, we've had the Hunter x Hunter readaptation, which is fucking phenomenal. And it's based on a retro manga, so it doesn't count. Also, only two arcs were good. Back in the 90s, we had great comedy OVAs like Golden Boy. Now we've got a 300 episodes of the best comedy show ever, Gintama. Because Golden Boy is about referencing Shonen Jump manga, not! Let's talk about uh, Trigun. I don't know if I have a direct comparison to that, but uh... There's a lot of good anime from 2014. You're not even trying! You like Gurren Lagann the best? Kill La Kill's about as good as Gurren Lagann. They are not even 10 years apart, they were made by the same people, and Gurren Lagann is not even retro yet! This year so far we've had Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju, a fucking amazing show. Did you finish it? I only watched two episodes and I thought it was one of the best fucking things I'd ever seen. If it couldn't hold your attention for more than two episodes, you cannot claim it was good. <laughs> Shiro Bako started in 2014, absolute fucking classic. Nothing in 1998 could fucking measure up to Shiro Bako. Why? Not enough lowlist to fop to? Fuck you, it was forgettable mediocrity. There was a lot of great stuff and a lot of terrible stuff. But the great stuff has lived on, and over time, everyone has forgotten about the terrible stuff. No, they haven't. They have forgotten the mediocre stuff. Do you see anyone forgetting Mouse of Destruction? Of course not. We all remember the bad stuff and the good stuff. What we forget is the mediocre stuff. These over here are all the shows from the 1970s. Yeah, as you can see, it's just sports. People have forgotten the sports, but still remember Ashitano Joe. So we had like a year about sports nobody cares about and Ashitano Joe, a one good series. How does this compare with today, huh? Hmm? We get like a fraction of good series and a bunch of shit and forgettable garbage, okay? Hundreds upon hundreds of those. How is that the same thing? It's not. The 1970s by comparison were made of gold. There's a lot of great shows on right now that just aren't that popular, cause guess what? People like bullshit. Like ponies, and moishets, and long beards, and drinking wine from a carton box, and sunglasses in the dark. The good shows are still there. Here's the problem. No one fucking watched Showa Gendoku Rakugo Shinju, the best fucking show on television. And neither did I, and neither did you, because it was more fitting to be a movie instead of a TV series. Also because it's Slice of Life, nobody cares about Slice of Life! You watched Erased, you watched Phantom World and Grimgar, shows that no one will talk about in two years, because they don't matter. I'm pretty sure nobody's gonna remember Showa and Goku either. You see, it's Slice of Nothing Ever Happens and those tend to be forgotten fast. But a lot of you did watch Konosuba and that was great. 
<laughs> the hypocrisy. It was mediocre, you pleb. Every time something good comes out, someone else wants to cash in by doing something similar without understanding what was good about the original. Hmm, I agree with this one. Any good examples? Ore no Emoto. Oh my god. It still has a lot of great elements to it. Lolis, incest, harem, light novel, so many great elements. And I am an otaku, a smart person who doesn't like my intelligence to be insulted. What about my intelligence, you insult? Anime's gone to shit, because the one specific show you loved in 1998 didn't have a rebroadcast that year. You like 10 shows, you're not a fucking anime fan. I like 60, I watch everything and I'm not into more shit. I am a true anime fan. Oh, oh, I, I also drink cognac. I am a true snob as well. <laughs> So far, the 2010s have been a fascinating decade for anime. We've had more new shows coming out each season than ever before. The most groundbreaking films and TV shows have come out in the past six years. This decade has been exceptional, celebrating the ways that the medium has continued to excite me over these last six years. Number 10, Twitter. The relationship between audiences and creators has opened up all across the board in every creative medium. As more and more studios and staff members have taken to Twitter, they've been able to affect the manner and level of engagement which fans can have with their works in countless little ways, which has been vital to the growing Sakuga community. Or look at studios like Kyoto Animation tweeting out cute character gifts. Urobuchi Gen spent months convincing everyone that he was turning over a new leaf with Madoka Magica and that it was totally just going to be a light-hearted magical girl show. No, really, guys, I promise. Twitter has also allowed for a lot more ease in crossing the Pacific cultural divide, as many tweets are translated into English while others are just posted that way by those who can speak it. Reddit deserves a shout out as well for all of the lengthy AMAs with producers and directors that have been conducted over the last few years. Number 9. Serialized Web Shorts The medium of original OVAs has all but completely died, with OVAs now almost exclusively being relegated to ongoing series tie-ins. In place of OVAs, we've seen an emerging trend of serialized film releases which represent the growth of internet viewership. Film serials offer an interesting answer to piracy in that they can make money in theaters which audiences have to buy tickets for. Number 8. The Monogatari and Mobile Suit Gundam Release Schedules It's such an inventive method of adapting the light novels that it really gives me hope to one day see something like a properly handled adaptation. Build Fighters is the perfect vehicle to make a kid-accessible version of Gundam without compromising on a gripping war story in its mainline AU shows like Iron-Blooded Orphans. Number 7. Digital effects totally raises the bar for what TV animation is capable of, where high-quality anime Animation, composition, directing, and design work are all coupled with high-tech digital effects work, I feel like I'm looking at the future of TV animation. Number 6. Awesome Remakes The 26 poorly animated episodes of Berserk, which cover the first 13 of its now 40 or so manga volumes, have left fans craving a complete adaptation which might deliver on their property's full potential. Number 5. Anime Studio Diaspora A lot of anime studios seem to completely fall apart, but a ton of new studios opened up and everything got really interesting. Hiroyuki Imaishi's studio Trigger immediately solidified an identity for itself as an even more punk version of Gainax, while Masao Maruyama established MAPPA as a studio somehow even more willing to bank everything on high-risk projects than Madhouse before it. Number 4. The Japan Animator Expo in a world where so many anime fans are dissatisfied with the stagnation and normalcy of lowest common denominator light novel adaptations flooding the market every season, the Japan Animator Expo was a definite breath of fresh air. Number 3. The Young Animator Training Project The results have been all over the place and always interesting. Number 2. Anime Crowdfunding With yet unseen results, such as the Under the Dog OVA, it's hard for me not to appreciate the potential which crowdfunding has to offer in allowing creators more freedom to make new and exciting properties with the blessing of their audience. Number 1. Online streaming. How anime is consumed and marketed has massively shifted under everyone's feet. If there's a future for anime to grow into, then it lies in figuring out how to get the fans voting with their wallets on what they want to see coming out of studios in the future. Considering the quality of animation which has been coming out even just in the current season, I can't help but be hopeful for the second half of this decade and for the future of anime still to come. Openly reward mediocrity, created for people who want nothing more than such. What I have found is that the 80s was in fact the greatest decade in anime history. That's because over the course of this decade it seemed as though what was incentivized was to make the best possible product.